What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be checking out how to create our very own Raspberry Pi controlled arcade system. If that sounds like something you've been interested in, please stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro suggested, we are going to be making our very own arcade system. That is right. So what we're gonna be doing is having to build this from absolute scratch. So I went ahead and jumped into good old uh, Inventor from Autodesk and basically modeled up my own version of a uh, arcade. Once I got everything put together, I basically created a whole bunch of drawings for this, and I'll see if I can't pull up a few of them here. Uh, let's see if I can, let's see, I, I can probably just get them all. So I basically generated drawings. Now, all these drawings, I will uh, have PDF'd, and I'll have them in the links down below, so I will put them out there on the GitHub site. So I'll put a repository out there, as well as the solid model files and everything, so that way if you want to pull it in to, I, I think Inventor Fusion will pull in Inventor parts and things like that. So, you know, the Fusion 360 or whatever it is, if you guys want to use that, because it's I think it's free for... 30 day or you can get a maker deal on it or something. I can't remember, but basically I'll post the stuff out here, but I've done the best that I can with, uh, dimensioning everything. So I basically got this all laid out. In fact, then on like this one, I laid out two different layouts for you guys. I have, uh, two different views. One view is the, uh, the actual dimensioned view. And if you guys want to measure everything from this common point, I basically, uh, what up here in the annotation, I just did one of those baseline, uh, or, or maybe it's, maybe it's called outline, uh, ordinate. One of the ordinates is what I did. So it's oriented around this base corner. So 150 is an inch and a half from there. And then three and a quarter to that one. So on and so forth is what I did. Now, Great thing about this being so small is that if you have eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, that's what I made that second view for. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Is this is the one to one size of it. So you can literally print this out, cut it out, and then it has the center points already marked on it. So you can just center drill, you know, uh, drill them all out. So that's the slick thing about this guy being so small is you can actually print out to scale a lot of your parts using just a standard inkjet or laser printer using standard eight and a half by 11 uh, paper. So that was another reason why I wanted to put these drawings out there for you guys. Uh, another one was, yeah, was this one. This is the, uh, uh, what is this? This is the screen, the screen display. So, you know, uh, what the dimensions are to cut out. This one is to scale as well, whereas you can get the actual dimensions if you want to dimension it yourself. So basically did all that. There's the dimension for the side uh, piece. It's a little busy, but I wanted to over dimension it versus under dimension it. So that way you have everything that you need to uh, make sure that you, you get it drawn uh, correctly on your uh, MDF and get it uh, plotted out correctly. So that's basically it for all the drawings. We basically have all the drawings and we will use those as we begin to build it. Now the software that we're gonna be using for this build is gonna be good old Retro Pi. Now I've done other uh, videos on this. Basically it works exactly the same as loading an image onto an SD card just like you would do for um, um, loading the Raspbian image for Raspberry Pi. And that's going to be the guts of this thing. It's going to be the heart of it is going to be a Raspberry Pi Model 3 B+. And this video, I want to shout out to our friends over at GearBest. They're the ones that sent me the Raspberry Pi for this build. So this video is sponsored by GearBest. So I want to give them a great big shout out. Just in case you didn't know, GearBest is a great place to procure items. Uh, one of the best places to get all kinds of different things for everyday living, as well as maker stuff as well. They do have all kinds of 3D printers, they've got drones, they have all kinds of stuff that will help you with your making. And one place I wanna show you real quick is the electrical and tools portion. Under their electrical and tools, they have all kinds of different pieces and parts. They have things from 3D printers to different uh, board level modules, all kinds of different things to help you out in your daily projects. So thanks again to GearBest for sponsoring this build. So we'll be using the RetroPie and basically you just download it. So we go to the download section. You're gonna download it for the Raspberry. If you're using the model that I'm using is the Model 
B plus um, down here because I wanted to have a lot of processing power. So we've got uh, Raspberry Pi 3. This is the image you'll download. You just load that onto the SD card using the Win32 uh, disk imager or whichever uh, imaging software that you like to use. I use the Win32 uh, imager. So you just load that on there and you should be good to go. Having said that, I've got that downloaded. I burn it to a, uh, a SD card and I'll be using that in the Raspberry Pi. But first, we need to go ahead and put together and build the arcade. So let's hit the garage and get some woodworking going. What's up, guys? Welcome to the uh, garage yet again. We're going to be cutting out some MDF, which is medium density fiberboard for this build. So we're going to be cutting out all the miscellaneous little pieces. I'll work on those side pieces uh, here before too long because that's got a lot of complicated curves and whatnot on it. So what I did for that was I just have these little 20 by 20 uh, pieces of wood here that we'll end up carving that out of later. So we'll mark that up later. Right now, I'm just going to cut out all the little tiny ancillary pieces. So the top, the bottom, the back, all the little short pieces that make up everything, as well as the uh, board for the uh, where the joysticks and stuff are going to be. So stay tuned. We'll check that out. Okay guys, so we got all of our pieces cut out and everything. Here's our two sides. Not too shabby for using a reciprocating saw for it, but there's our two sides. Um, they came out pretty darn nice. We got all of our different pieces. I've labeled pretty much all of them. There's our marquee, so that should go on you know, front. We'll cut this out later, cut some holes in that and everything. Um, for right now, I think we're just gonna get the back going as well as getting the uh, the other pieces uh, going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. I'm gonna go grab the good old Brad nailer, which is what we're gonna be uh, using to put this guy together. I think since I accidentally chipped that side, I'll make this the outsides and put that chip towards the inside. 
so that way it doesn't look bad. And we'll just start putting her together uh, with the bottom and the back, all right? So I got the good old Brad Daler out here. This thing just makes things a lot easier to work with. Got ourselves some good old wood glue, so we'll be putting her together. Now, something to think about. We're gonna be putting some of that T-molding around the edges of this to make it look all pretty. So we're using one of these uh, cutters that's basically a side cutter. I'll put a link down in the description where to get some of these. But this is a basically a slot cutter is what this is for a uh, router. Uh, so basically what it's going to do is it's going to cut that slot in there. Now, the idea behind this is the fact that the slot is going to have to be dead center in this wood. So you have to take into account how deep into the wood this will cut for as we're shooting brad nails in, we don't want to be hitting the brad nails with this cutter. So we're going to have to be careful as we put nails in the, in the system to hold it together just till the glue dries. We got to make sure we put the nails far enough back, we're not going to hit them with this cutter. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and printed out a uh, layout of where the controls are going to go and then I'm going to go ahead and use a punch here and just mark out where they need to go. So we'll just... Okay guys, so I'm going to now attempt to cut the groove into all of this so that way I can uh, do it. So I've got our, our cutter set up in the bottom here and so we should be good to go. Now what I was gonna do is on the back here, I was gonna make a little, a little door that will swing open and shut so that way I can access the inside when it's all buttoned up. So I'm just gonna make a simple little door right here and be done with it. Okay guys, so I'm now to the point where I'm painting it. So I'm doing a uh, primer first. <clears throat> so I've got it all laid out on a mat and I'm basically priming it. I got this kind of primer here, just some Krylon 2-in-1 uh, filler primer, so that way if there's any scratches or imperfections in it, uh, <clears throat> I basically don't have to worry about it. So basically over here on my workbench here, I've taken apart the uh, 
the monitor basically very simple uh simple lcd screen the cool thing about it is it came with all these little brackets that basically hold down the monitor and these little guys are able to screw into the wood and i'll, I'll show you that uh, once i assemble that on but basically i've taken this apart taking apart the other stuff so we're just going to let the paint dry and end up or at least let the primer dry and then we'll paint it okay boys and girls we got pretty much the thing pretty well painted i wasn't real worried about the sides because i'm going to be putting uh some covers on it so not too worried about it being perfect but i think it came out pretty good okay guys so it has been very interesting putting this together now one thing that was really cool about uh the monitor is it came with these little clips and you know what they screw in perfectly all i had to do is just kind of beat the little screw in and these are little wood screws they work perfectly holding this thing in place i'm actually very impressed with it now the question was i didn't know how to remount the board so what i ended up doing was kapton taping the back since this is metal i kapton taped the back of it so i wouldn't short out the board and then i provided some space in between i had some of the, i reused some of the screws that they had used but i provided a spacer and it was basically a little nylon nut is what i did i have this little kit that has a bunch of little uh like m4 nylon nuts works perfectly as a spacer uh underneath so i just put the screw through it with a spacer and that little thing it's on there i mean i'm lifting the whole board up i mean it's on there so it looks pretty good i got it sitting on this cloth so that way i don't damage our beautiful paint job and then we flip it over here and so that's kind of what the screen's going to look like so it looks pretty cool so i'm going to start putting her together all right guys so it's come to the time where we're going to start wiring up some stuff so i'm going to put the speakers in that's what i think i'm going to do we'll probably set the display and whatnot and get things prepared for the raspberry pi so stay tuned Okay guys, well, ran into a little bit of a snag. Totally forgot that I have to power this little, this little device here. Uh, takes 12 volts. Gladly, the little screen monitor uh, little guy is a 12 volt uh, 
power pack. Now it is one amp. The screen says it takes one amp, but I'm going to be willing to bet it doesn't really take a full amp. So we're going to try this. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll have to put a splitter in here and get a 12 volt power supply. I don't know. But basically the monitor came with a little like extension cord cable that was a little barrel connector extension cord. So what I did was I just spliced into it another wire that we can hook up to our little amplifier here and that'll give it the 12 volts that it needs. So in any case, that's what we're gonna give a shot and hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, then I guess I'll have to come up with its own power supply. Okay guys, so what I ended up doing was using my little template here that I made and I basically printed out this cool little controller looking uh, overlay and I basically cut it out with a uh, X-Acto knife. I went ahead and mounted up the joystick. I kind of got off a little bit. I could have scooted this over a little more, but it still works and should be fine once we cover it up with everything. All right, so what we've got is just from my local hardware store, got some pieces of plexiglass, some for the uh, marquee and some for down here. So this is just, uh, basically uh, tough, virtually unbreakable. Yeah, well, we'll see how unbreakable it is. Polycarbonate uh, plastic. So hopefully uh, we should be able to put that on there, uh, drill some holes in it and make it work. Okay guys, so that came out absolutely perfect. So that's gonna fit perfectly on there. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I have to blow all this off, is we will attach everything on and I'm gonna put some holes in here and screw it all down. Okay guys, there she is with the old polycarbonate down on there. Got it all mounted up. So there it is. So now. It's time to install the buttons and plug them in to the board. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and install this cool little USB uh, controller board. Uh, it does the joystick, it uses a USB connector. I've got it down here uh, that basically plugs in here and then it basically just works like a gaming controller. And so we just plug in all the different buttons and Bob's your uncle. So we're gonna go ahead and wire that up. is put the sides on. So I using a wide format printer, I printed off uh, just a big sheet of, uh, of a decal that I found. And so I basically just trace the box on it and then now I'm going to stick it down. I'm gonna use some of that 777 upholstery adhesive uh, that I used in my video when I made the uh, little Bluetooth speaker. I think that's gonna work great. I'll smooth it all down and then we'll put some stuff on it to uh, make it all glossy and shiny. But first, we gotta get it stuck to the box. So that's gonna be the next. Okay guys, so it looks like that got stuck down all right. There's a few rough edges, but I think I'll fix it later. Next thing we're gonna do is Mod Podge. This is for paper. Uh, it's a gloss coating. We're gonna just goop it out on here and it should seal this up so that water splashes and stuff can't mess up the ink and we should be able to seal it all and any flaps or anything, we should be able to glue it down with this Mod Podge. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. OK, 
Okay guys, and there it is, all finished. We got the sides on it, and that came out quite nice. I like the way that it came out. Now, I will say one thing, the Mod Podge was probably a bad idea to just dump out onto it because it actually wrinkled up a little bit uh, on the side. So I would not recommend doing that. Very, very, very light coats of it. If not, getting some spray enamel would probably be the best. But basically, you got, you got it all. So you can swap through the different games. Uh, in fact, I will go to this one and then down to Pac-Man. And then it should load and be just fine. So we've got the little power button on the side as well as all the other pieces. So here it comes up now. And we also got the speakers all mounted up underneath. I'd say this came out quite well. And of course there is good old retro game Pac-Man. And there he is being chased by the ghosts. So guys, this was a fantastically fun build to do. I'm telling you, it was actually hard at times, but it was definitely a blast to do. I highly recommend you guys trying it out. So let's go ahead and sit down and we'll wrap it all up. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying with me through this whole project. If you made it to the end of the video, definitely leave me a comment down below if you made it all the way to the end. Uh, put something about gaming, video gaming, maybe the last time that you played video games, something like that. Put that down in the description. I know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Guys, this has been a fantastic build. I have totally enjoyed putting this thing together. I thought it was gonna be a pain when I first started doing it, and then honestly, it just grew and grew on me because I'm doing something that I've really enjoyed, which is video games, and honestly, once I started getting the games on this thing and playing them again, I've all the floods of memories came back of all the times I used to spend in the arcade dumping quarters into something, as well as playing video games at home. So I have totally, totally enjoyed uh, putting this together it's something that was near and dear to my heart and so I wanted to give that to you guys and that passion to you guys so I thank you very much I would say give this a try uh, all the documentation and everything for the one that I just built is uh, at my github so down in the description area go find that link as well as I will leave a bill of materials down there for all the different uh, buttons and the joystick and all the different uh, pieces and parts uh, that put this thing together again this is built out of MDF or medium density fiberboard. It's something that you can acquire at uh, any Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that here in the United States. Uh, whatever it is uh, in the country you're in, just medium density fiberboard, uh, three quarter inch thick was what I built this out of. The same stuff we made the Bluetooth radio out of. So guys, I don't want to take any more of your time. This has been excellent and a lot of fun to make. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, and share this video because I want to get this spread out to as many people as possible because this is a blast to make and it's fun to have in your house. Just a, a fantastic heirloom if you're somebody that uh, loves gaming. So definitely check that out. Check me out on Instructables and Twitter and Facebook and all the different social medias and all that stuff as well as check out the new Reddit. I've got a new subreddit going on that uh, you guys can come post to. I try to at least post something every single day and mostly cross posts and anything of course that I'm doing and whatnot as well as I posted pictures of this build all the way through on my Twitter and Facebook. So definitely come check me out on those different social media platforms. Guys, thank you so much, and we will see you in the next video.